Thanks for the North from Bicycle Station. Getting you guys out here on a nice, uh, gorgeous March morning. All right, riders, on your mark. Get set, go. Good job, good job. Have a fantastic ride. Right here, I'm talking to John Magger, the race promoter for the War Daddy Hardest Gravel Race in Kentucky. And he was just saying thanks for the shout outs on the podcast. And so after I've chatted with him for a sec, I'm like, hey, uh, I kind of need to get to the front of this race. And so I zip on up there. Not that big of a deal. It's about six miles of paved road until the first gravel sector. So I'm not too worried about it. And before you know it, I'm right there with the front. My buddy Trey here slides in on my inside right before that turn, so I'm giving him a hard time, kind of heckling him, but I know he, he just wanted to be on the YouTube channel. I get it, I get it. I'm gonna let a little bit of a gap open right here because we're about to hit a creek crossing and the thing about creek crossings is that there's big old rocks in those creeks and I don't want to hit one of them rocks and I don't want to get a flat tire. So I'm okay with having to put in a little bit of an extra effort if it means no flats. pretty hard on this first climb and I come up here next to local junior hero George Frazier and he starts talking to me and in the back of my head I'm thinking is he playing with me like is he trying to show me how strong he is by talking to me in the middle of this hard climb because I'm breathing heavy and you should be breathing heavy too is he trying to get in my head I don't know but the cool thing about this race is that the hardest climb is the very first part of the gravel section. Like we've only been racing for maybe 20 minutes and we hit this gnarly steep climb. And my strategy for this race is just to use those climbs to my advantage. And so I'm gonna go hard on as many climbs as I can to soften up everybody's legs until I get a gap. And when I do get a gap, I'm gonna try and open it up.
there's about four or five of us over the top of that first climb and this is a race and I'm okay with dudes pulling for as long as they want so my buddy Trey again here is gonna take this massively long pull and he doesn't even look back he doesn't flick his shoulder hey I am okay with that if I take the shortest pulls out of this entire group that's strategy so we come up onto this second climb of the day and like i said i'm not trying to attack just yet i'm just on the front pushing the pace trying to soften everybody's legs for this effort you're looking at about nine minutes at just over 350 watts normalized and towards the top you can start to see my homeboy lanier ash starting to make some faces which is exactly what i want and over the top we are still a group of six On this climb, the third climb of the day, we make that hard left hand turn. It's a little bumpy. Again, just trying to soften the legs, wanting to push the pace, not necessarily like shifting up, getting out of the saddle and accelerating, just wanting to hurt my competitors. But with that effort, it leaves just me and Lanier with George chasing, but it doesn't take long for the group to come back together and there's about four or five of us back together again. Then we hit one of the longer climbs of the course, it's paved, and on this one I actually am intentionally attacking. I'm going harder than the, on the previous climbs. This is a normalized of 423 for about three and a half minutes. George Frazier, like a beast, is able to bridge up to me. We have to slow up just a hair because of some on -cap, oncoming traffic and getting stuck behind another rider. And then as soon as that car passes, this is the moment of truth. This is where George looks back and I just keep motoring on and you can just see he is in a bad spot right now. We are really close to the top. He is struggling to stay with my wheel and there is just a moment here where it's gonna flatten out just a hair. And rather than let up, I accelerate even more right here. And the gap just opens. It is moments like that in a race where you need to take full advantage of the momentum you have and open that gap because that is now in their heads. They see that gap opening, I'm out of the saddle pushing it, and they're just little specks in the background. And as we crest this hill, one of the things that I'm really cognizant of is trying to get out of sight. Because there are so many turns, I am constantly looking back to see, okay, can they still see me? Because once they can't see me, they may sit up and let that gap grow even more. I 
take a bit of a wrong turn. It probably cost me 15 or 20 seconds, and then they've got me back in their sight. They're about 10, 15 seconds behind me. But then we hit this really big climb. The gravel is pretty loose, so you have to stay seated for the majority of this climb. And it's my goal to open this gap back out again. And on this climb, I am able to go at a normalized power of 393 for four and a half minutes. And realize this is kind of late in the race. It's probably about 45 miles into the race. Alright, I've got the gap. We're on the last climb. It's about an eight minute climb, two miles, normalized power of 352. I think I'm smooth sailing. This climb has a couple good switchbacks where I can get a good view from behind and see if I can see if they're close behind and I don't see them at all. And once I get to the top of this climb, there's a pretty screaming fast downhill with a couple fun turns. We turn onto that main street and then it's smooth sailing to the finish. Can never. These are the moments only got one life. This is your moment, whether wrong or right. Are your own enemy, your own enemy, your own enemy. Yeah. When I fall, I keep running. Feel the pain, but I love it. Yeah. You know I'm built for it. You ain't gotta ask twice. You ain't buy that fast life. Huh, honey on the dash with the cash light. Huh. You ain't buy that fast life. All right, so I ended up soloing this race for about 28 miles, which is an hour and 23 minutes. Normalized power of 337. Hey, that's no Pogacha, but it was good enough to take the dub at the local race this weekend. But the interesting thing about this is that if you divide it from the beginning portion of the course, from when we hit that first climb until my attack, my normalized power up until I got the gap was 325. And so the difference between the first half when I was in a group to the second half when I was solo was only 12 watts normalized. That's not a huge gap. You wouldn't think that that would be race winning kind of power numbers. However, that was the second half of the race. And the longer these races are, the more important it comes to be the durability and the uh, ability to just be able to put out the same power that you can at the beginning of the ride. And just to practice this even more, uh, I had a long ride on that day. So after the race, I rode again. And just out of curiosity, because I wanted to train this idea of durability, right? We're talking about fatigue resistance, being able to put out big watts late in the race. Because who cares about your 20 minute or your five minute power fresh because that doesn't win races. What wins races is you being able to put out a super high five minute number a hundred miles into the race a couple miles before the finish. So to test this for myself, I tried it on that last really hard gravel climb, wanted to see if I could beat my power during the race. So this is about a hundred miles into my ride. I've already raced. This I did, I did the climb in four minutes and 11 minutes, four minutes and 11 seconds at a power of 403. And during the race, of course, I had been off the front for a while at that point. During the race, I did that climb in 431 with a normalized of 393. 
And so one of the things that I'm obviously trying to work on as a new to me gravel racer is being able to put out super high power late in the race. So one of the ways that you can do this is on your interval days, just add on a five minute all out effort at the very end of your ride. Maybe your workout only takes two hours, but you, you built in a lot of fatigue and you've already done a full workout before that. Now let's see if you can put out some power with that fatigue in your legs, because that's how races are won. Just know a hundred duffels at the bag price. You ain't by the fast life. Six speed, yeah, I'm smashing on the gas, gas, gas.